always able. No matter what you're going through, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, we know that He's able. Amen? Amen. God can do anything but fail. Amen? Amen. And we're living in days now where we really need to know that He's able. Amen? Don't let your faith fail you now. Hold on to that faith. Keep believing your God and know that he's able. Amen? Amen. Uh, right now we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. If there's anyone who has a spoken request, you can either stand now and let it be known or simply just by raising your hand. You said let your request be made known unto God. Amen? Amen. Sister Marshall? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor. 
Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, because of your mercies that we are not consumed, because your compassions, they fail not. Lord, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And Lord, we thank you for being faithful unto us. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy that you have shown toward us in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon each and every soul that is here on today. Lord, we ask you to look on each and every one of us, Lord, to allow your grace and your mercy, your strength and your power to rest upon us. Lord, you lead us and you guide us. Hallelujah. That you fill us with your greatness. Fill us with your anointing. Fill us with your power. Comfort our hearts. Comfort our spirit. Comfort our soul in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, comfort us, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless each and every request that's been made known to you, Lord. We pray, Lord, because you know all. There's no other help that we know. There's no other strength that we know. There's no other power that we know. Hallelujah. We ask you, Lord, that you stretch out your mighty hand. Move by your grace and by your power, Lord. By every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come against us. Lord, we ask you to rebuke them. And we ask you, Lord, that you rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, come on into our service on today. Hallelujah. We invite your presence. We invite your anointing. We invite your courage. We invite your strength. Let the most shout. Lord, rain on us. Rain on us. Rain on us. Rain down your power. Rain down your anointing. Rain down your glory. Lord, give us help. We come on shot. Give us help, Lord. Help us in this time of trouble. Help us in this time of need. Lord, we're calling on your name. We come on shot. Lord, you break every yoke. You break that every stronghold. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Lord, indeed we trust. Indeed we hope. Indeed we live. Indeed we move. Indeed we have our need. Ah, come on, stop. Hallelujah. Lord, we know you can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Lord, we know that you know our weaknesses. You know our frailties. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Our soul says we will bless you, Lord, at all times. And your praises. Your praises shall continually be in our mind. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We cast it on you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on and just give the Lord a praise in this atmosphere. Come on and give God a praise in this atmosphere. He's worthy in this atmosphere. Let us turn to the 62nd division of Psalms. Everybody have a say amen. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Yes. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall be, not be greatly moved. Yeah. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall you be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly, Selah. My soul wait thou only upon God, yes. for he is for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Yes. In God is my salvation and my glory. Yes, the rock of my strength yes, and my refuge is in God. Hallelujah. 
Trust in him at all times, all time. ye people. Yes, Pour out your heart before him. Yes, God is a refuge for us. Yes, See him. Surely men of low degree are vanity, yes. and men of high degree are alive. Yes, to be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Hallelujah. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. Yes, if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God hath spoken once, yes. twice have I heard this, yes, that power belongeth unto God. Yes, also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. Yes, for thou renderest every man according to his work. Yes, Eleven again, God hath spoken once, yes, twice have I heard this, yes. that power belongeth to God. Yes, Hallelujah. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Praise him. Lord, you reign above every day. 
God bless you. Oh, 
But I still be moving, amen. Long as this old body a rock, we're gonna move for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I used to run around the church, amen. Hallelujah. You had so much energy. But the younger you get, you'll find out. You can still move it when you get young. You just sometimes he just moves through your body. You just have to rock with him, amen. Been rocking with Jesus now for a long time. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you don't know about it, just keep living. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank and praise the Lord this morning for another opportunity to just praise him. Amen. Because he's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't take nothing for Jesus. Amen. Not one dime. You couldn't offer me enough money. Amen. I often say the wealthiest person in the world is the person who has something that money can't buy. Amen. You, we look at Bill Gates and Bezos and all of them as being wealthy people. But they don't have anything that I know of that money can't buy. Amen. Everything they have, money can buy. But when you get the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God down on the inside of you, that's something that money can't buy. So I consider everybody in here in this room that's filled with the Holy Ghost as the wealthiest people on this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. You got eternal life about it inside of you. Hallelujah. For that I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be among one of the wealthiest. Amen. Amen. So don't take it lightly what you have. Amen. Value what you have. Amen. You don't want to give it up for nothing or no thing or nobody. Amen? Amen. Because this cannot be bought. It's a gift from God. Amen? And all you have to do to have it is just repent. Amen? Hallelujah. And he's promised to fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. That's your ticket out of here. Amen? You can't go by train. You can't go by airplane. You can't go by bus. You can't go to heaven by all those things. So that Holy Ghost in you, he said, if that spirit be in you that raised Christ from the dead, it shall also quicken your mortal body. So when the rapture comes and he says, come my people, everything in them that's been baptized in Jesus' name, because he said, come my people. You know, all your people got your same name, don't they? Oh yeah, all your people got all your all your people got Harpers or your maiden name, Amen. All mine are either Taylors, Beesons, or Ducks, Amen. So when when the Lord stops in midair and say, "Come, my people," you got to be baptized in His name. You got to have the name of Jesus on, it. Amen. And you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, Amen. That's your ticket out of here, Amen. So all you that have it, you're some of the wealthiest people in the world. Because it's something that money can't buy. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to All right. These are our announcements for this afternoon. Our service schedules are we have Bible class on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And all you that don't come, you miss a great treat. Amen. Pastor's been teaching some dynamic Bible classes. And they've just been beautiful. Amen. I have to go home and listen to it again. Amen. Because... There's always something you miss. Amen. You can't hear it all. So much comes out of his mouth. Amen. So always go home and listen to it again. Amen. Amen. And we have our Sunday morning services here. Sunday schools at 930. And our morning service starts at 11 o'clock. Amen. Also the funeral for Brother Terrell Bennett. It will be Saturday, February 6th at 930 Liberty Street here. The viewing will be from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And the homegoing celebration will start at 12 noon. Amen? Amen? All right. Let's come and show our sister some love. Amen? Because yeah. we love her very dearly. Amen? Amen. Amen? And only those who've been there and gone through something like this know where she's at. Amen? Amen. So keep her lifted up in prayer. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And the Father also. Amen? He's sitting over there all quiet. And he, he's anointed, but hey, you need folk too, amen? The, the people always just look at the mother, amen? 
Let me pray for that mother. I pray for both parents. Amen. Amen. And the children, the brothers and sisters, and the kinfolk. Amen. 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 Let's pray for the whole Hall Quinn Bennett family. Amen. Amen. We got everybody covered. All right. Amen. Uh, we want y'all to know we love y'all dearly. Amen. If I can take some of your joy, your pain, your sorrow, I would. Amen. I've been there, done that. I know how it feels. Amen. But you know what? God, he'll bring you through it. Amen. He will bring you through it. It's just, uh, 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 through my six years of my husband passing, and then eight months later, my sister passed, and I found out that bereavement is like a wound. It, it's like you know, a hole in your body or something, but it slowly heals over time. Amen. Over time, it closes up, and you feel better. Amen? You never forget them. They're always in your heart. And you think about them. Sometimes you're going to have a great cry outburst. Amen? But that's good for you. Amen? Don't be ashamed of that. Just cry. One time, I remember I was on my way from work, and I just started boo-hoo, and I couldn't stop. So my daughter's house was the closest thing to me. Amen? And she had, she had this little... I don't know, shit zoo dog. And that little dog knew that something was wrong with me. That dog never liked me. But he jumped up in my lap and just laid there, like rubbed my head, you know. And I started rubbing her head. Her name was Izzy. I started rubbing her head. I said, Izzy, thank you. I feel better. And she, I said, you can get down now, Izzy. She looked up at me and she didn't get down. She said, no, you ain't done yet. I still see it. You know, animals can see and I kept rubbing her head, amen? And that dog, when I felt better, then she jumped down out of my lap. But that was the best little therapy, amen? So if someone could just be with you rubbing your hand, your head, anything, amen? When you have those little outbursts, don't be ashamed, because you're going to get them, amen? They're going to come, but that's good for you. It's part of the bereavement, amen? Don't hold it in. Let it out, amen? Amen. All right, now we're going to change the order of our service. It's blessing time. Amen? Amen. How many know you can't be God given? Amen. We're going to take two offerings this morning. All right. We're going to have two offerings, but pastor's going to do the second one. This is just our church offering that we're going to lift now. Ask Deacon Fields if he'd come forth, please. Deacon Fields is going to take this side of the building as he gives. Brother Page is going to take this side of the building as he gives. This is our general church office. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask the Lord that you bless this offering for the building up of Christian ministries. Bless those that give, Lord, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, fortyfold, thirtyfold, Lord, in the name of Jesus, according to thy will, O God. And ask the Lord that you'll bless Christian ministries, Lord. Let us be a saving station for your people. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Let the church stand.
Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Amen. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy, his grace that he has shown toward us. Truly, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, there's no telling where we would be. And, you know, as it's no secret, and as we know that um, our brother, uh, Terrell Bennett, has uh, passed away. Thank you, Lord. And it certainly is a sad occasion. And our words cannot express. I was listening to some of the things that Pastor Duck was saying, and it's true, it hits you in waves. And sometimes you think you're all right, and then you think about something, then you're all wrong. <laughs> and it just moves on your heart and on your spirit. And um, truly, uh, Brother Terrell was, uh, they asked us um, yesterday, uh, well, what did he do around the church's position? And the first thing came to my, my mind was he was a help. Yeah. Yeah. He was a help. He was here. He was here to help. He was here to do what was needed to do. Yeah. And he would do the dirty work as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the things that other people didn't want to do, uh, he, would, he would come and help and get it done. And he was also one of our ushers that was here uh, when we needed him. And um, it's unfortunate uh, that uh, Brother uh, Terrell didn't have any insurance. And um, we had uh, contacted the funeral home and made arrangements and things like that. And we sat down with them on yesterday and they gave us a goal in mind. They said uh, it was $8,000. And, um, and that's very inexpensive. To do, to do a funeral. And um, having said that, um, they, it's a dark funeral home and they helped uh, us to set up a GoFundMe page. A GoFundMe page. And uh, right now, I believe it's over $3,000 that people are paying. Can you get that on the page? So we wanted to, to give Christian ministries an opportunity to give as well. And I'm not one to um, you know, talk about how much I'm giving, but I'm going to myself, I'm going to put in $200 uh, toward, toward the goal, toward the effort. Amen. And, um, uh, and I'm not saying that uh, in a sense to, to, to boast myself up or to, I just, I want you to know I'll give it. That's what I want you to know, I'll give it. And um, if you're able to give, not able to give right now, you want to, uh, to give uh, in this coming week, uh, you'll have that opportunity. Just let First Lady know, and uh, we'll go from there. So I uh, want to give those that have an opportunity. First Lady, would you write that check for me? All right. And, and those that want to give, uh, you can stand at this time. Understand any, any amount of do, uh, help. Hold on, because they were praying. Any amount will help. And uh, like I said, I mean, if you didn't come to me to, to give on this day, uh, and if you did desire to give, please leave First Lady. First Lady, raise your hand. They all know you, though. You, you're the cute one in the back. desire to give online through our title, just mark it under donation. Under donation. Don't put it under tithes. There's categories. Just put it under donation. And we'll, we'll make sure that it gets to the, to the funeral home. That's an awesome funeral home. I'm telling you. Let, let the church stand. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you for this opportunity to sow seed we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is here on today. And those, Lord, that are about to give, and those that don't have it right now but will desire to give. We ask you, Lord, that you bless them 30, 60, and 100 fold. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Lord, you are awesome.
hurting, and you hurt me, you peace of mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, you know, when they first called me, I had a little tickle in my throat. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I like, Lord, Jesus. My wife, I'm telling my wife, she said, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there. After she said I was all good, all the symptoms left. <laughs> Uh, Y'all know how my mind is. Thank you, Lord. But uh, it's good. It's good. I was glad. I was happy. Amen. And uh, we certainly thank God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I pray that they make all the rapid tests uh, available to everybody. So, so when you think you got something, you can go get tested. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, but having said that, I wanted to say, let us be safe. Amen. Let us be protected. We won't uh, be in that condition. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And um, with uh, Brother Terrell's funeral, uh, my, my wife and me had uh, contacted some people that wanted to be ushers. So if, if we, you didn't get contacted and you want to be an usher uh, for that Saturday service, please see my wife and she'll meet briefly with those that do. Um, we won't have a repass here at the church. we we'll just do it privately. And, uh, one of the family members' houses, so um, uh, that will happen that way, amen. But truly, um, uh, keep my, my brother, Brother Sylvester, amen, and truly my sister, Sister Yolanda, uh, in the prayers and their sons and the family, amen, and their friends. Do you realize I have a lot of friends? I didn't realize that. They call them T. Lemon. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. A lot of friends. And, uh, so let us pray for those. And let's pray for Christian ministries because he was near and dear to our hearts as well. Yeah. Amen. And I thank God for uh, family members that have come out. And I see my children here, see my sister here as well. And thank God for that. Amen. And Pastor, I had to step out. Pastor Joyce Moses, that was her on the phone. And she was. Let me know she's praying for the congregation. And she said, if there's anything that we needed, let them know they're available. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Amen. So we certainly do praise God. And I thank God for my brother-in-law, too. He being here. Amen. Praise God for him. Praise God for him. Praise God for him. Praise God for Praise God for my daughters. Yeah, they're here. Mara and, 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 and uh, what's her name? Sharice. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you. Y'all you know my mind going. I got to help with Sharice. Sharice, I care. I'm talking to her. She come in the office. I said, oh, Sharice, you losing weight? She said, I'm boxing now. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Oh, get tough. Yes, yes, Sharice. Thank God for Pastor Duck and Mother Louise, <laughs> ministers, and deacons, and elders. And we thank God for all of you. And then they impressed your way and come to be in the house, in the house of the Lord. And um, truly, I won't be before you long today unless the Holy Ghost says something else. But we certainly do praise God. Thank God, too, for your giving. And I uh, will take that for granted. And that's another thing. We shouldn't take nobody for granted. Amen. Don't take nobody for granted. Uh, Brother Terrell, he was here uh, physically, and to my knowledge, last time I saw him, he was here Sunday. Amen. Helping with the media team. He was, I don't want to say he had help. <laughs> he was here helping, getting it done. And, uh, you know, uh, I was supposed to meet with him on Tuesday. We was going to handle some business, but that didn't happen. But... Um, and then, uh, you know, I got the call Wednesday. And that Wednesday morning, he was talking to his, his mother, his father, his, because it was my brother's birthday that day. Amen. Oh, pray for Jarrell. Jarrell's birthday is today. Amen. 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 Yeah. And uh, they were talking together. And, and then, you know, uh, I got the call about 12. Uh, that something was going on. So, you know, you never know. Yes. Amen. You never know. And um, uh, the cause of death uh, was that uh, he had a massive heart attack. 
There was no drugs involved, no overdose, nothing like that. And so we got it out there. And I had a massive heart attack, and then, um, um, you know, because of the time that he was down, uh, he lost oxygen to the brain. So, you know, that's the story. So anybody else tell you a different story, they lied. <laughs> so, you know, so I wanted you to know that. I wanted you to know that. Amen. And uh, that way, uh, we can also think about this. You know, as African Americans, you know, we all battle with that high blood pressure. You know, and Terrell didn't complain of any sickness. He didn't feel bad. You know what I mean? He wasn't. He wasn't acting like he was feeling bad. You follow me? And that uh, that heart attack is a silent killer. So you know, go to your doctor, get checked up. Amen. If you got on high blood pressure medication, take your blood pressure medication. Amen. If you if you aren't on the right, stay with your doctor till you get on the right medication. Yeah. I mean, you need them. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It's based on our dying, our, our, our heredity. And it, and it pains me. Now, see now, y'all, y'all bear with me just for a moment. Uh, it pains me, you know, when you look at the statistics that are going against black people, and one of the statistics that goes against black people are that um, our health. You know, that's another statistic. We're in the financial deficit. We're in the housing deficit. We're in the employment deficit. Jesus, Lord help us. <laughs> We're in the health deficit. All right? Amen. So let us take care of our health. Amen. Let us take care of our health. Let us see about our health. Amen? Amen. I got me a primary care physician. How many of y'all got y'all a primary care physician? All right. Good. Praise God. Amen. Work, work with them. Amen. He raised out. He raised his hand high. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. If you don't get you one, if you're worried about insurance, get you a welfare card. Amen. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I'd rather see you alive. Amen. Amen. And get checked up and follow the doctor's recommendations. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Yeah. Thank you all for bearing with me. Thank you, Jesus. And we. Certainly do praise God. I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of uh, Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Thank you, Jesus. We want the church to stand. Thank you, Jesus. We certainly do welcome all of our visitors that are here yeah. today. Here are Christian ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We certainly do praise God for you. And Deacon Daniels, he was out of town, so we thank God for him being back in town. Amen. Amen. Um, Luke chapter 18 and verse number 1. And it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always to pray and not to faint saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And when he would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear long with him, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. And uh, you may be seated. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, bless us here on today. Open up our understanding, 
Send us a word of strength and encouragement. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I want to take for a thought uh, this morning uh, from that first verse, uh, 18 and 1. And he said, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. That men ought always to pray and not faint. And uh, I'll take a thought, if I could, uh, persistence. Amen. Persistence. Be persistent. Amen. Can we say that together? Be persistent. Be persistent. And if we were to uh, look at our scripture here on today and begin to understand that even on last week we were talking about prayer. Yeah. Amen. Prayer coming boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And one of the things that we lack in our lives is prayer. And what I mean by that is that there's different types of prayer because different res responses to life happen to you. So it's not a one type of prayer cures all. There's different types of prayer. And when the Bible talks about coming boldly to the throne of grace. And that word grace there, it doesn't mean favor. It doesn't mean favor. It means strength. Therefore, coming boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain grace and mercy to help you in your time of need. That's a type of prayer that you come to God when uh, you need help. And the help that you need that you need God to do some things for you. You being fought in your mind and, and in your spirit and you need something to change. You need something to break. And you need God to instill in you the power and authority to walk and do his will. In other words, when you're being tempted and the enemy is fighting you, trying to tempt you to bring you down, that's when you go boldly with confidence yeah. that you got a great high priest uh, that can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities and your weakness. Y'all hear me now. He can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities and weakness yeah. so that he can empower you to put your foot on the devil's neck. Yeah. So he can empower you to, to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you've been called so that he can empower you so that you can pick yourself up by your bootstraps and dust yourself off and realize I'm going through here in Jesus' name. That's what it means when it says come boldly to the throne of grace. And this type of prayer here that we're dealing with in the scriptures today, thank you Lord, is dealing with a situation wherein Jesus is talking about a parable. And a parable is literally a moral story. It's a moral story that is told or taught by a teacher because it has something within it that he wants the hearers to hear and to obey. And Jesus is here talking about prayer once again. And he's talking about prayer because uh, there's some truths that he wants us to understand about prayer and what we need from God. In this particular situation, he's talking about prayer when you're dealing with an adversary. When you're dealing with an adversary, the devil. When you're dealing with an adversary that, that wants to do you wrong and you want God to turn it around. You want God to turn it around. And Jesus here is talking about an unjust judge. An unjust judge. The judge, uh, the Bible says, uh, 
he was in a position of authority and power. And his position of authority and power was such that he should be helping others, that he should be advocating for this widow. And this widow, uh, as you would understand in Eastern times, when they called one a widow, that means that she had lost her husband and that she didn't have any children to help take care of her. So she was in a destitute situation, a bad situation, if you will. So Jesus is, is making this parable to let us know that oftentimes we may find ourselves in a bad situation. Yes. We may find ourselves in a destitute situation. And when we go to people to help us, they may not help us. They may turn their back on us. They, they may look another way. Uh, the, the problem with this, this judge was that the Bible says that he was unjust and he did not fear God and he did not fear man. And Jesus said that to let us know the state of this judge. Uh, an individual that does not fear God, that means that they're irresponsible. That they, they march to the beat of their own drum. The Bible says that uh, that a fool had said in his heart that there is no God. And when you're dealing with people that are godless, you're dealing with the straight up devil. When you're dealing with people uh, that, 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 that have no regard for God and, and they sure don't have any regard for you. Oh my God, my God. They, they, you can look for trouble. You can look for trouble. Uh, as I was studying this verse, and I was studying this word. Uh, the, one of the commentators said that if you find people like this, you totally avoid them. <laughs> and you go, you, you don't, you don't stir them up. You go the other way because they, they, they wicked, they unjust, and they no good. Thank you, my God. I don't think I ever said that behind the pulpit, <laughs> calling people no good. <laughs> but there's some no good people out there. There's some people out there that don't mean you any good. Yeah. Amen. And I'm a, I'm a kind of Pollyanna kind of guy when I say that I try to look for the good in everybody. I be saying, Lord, give, give, let's give the person a chance. Let's, let's see if we can help them. Amen. But there's some people out there. Hallelujah. They want to put their foot on your neck not once but twice and stab you in the back. Hallelujah. And those are the kind of people uh, that Jesus was talking about here uh, in this particular lesson, that this individual was a wicked individual where, that was in power but refused to use his power in a proper way. And the Bible says that uh, this widow, this widow, uh, she had an adversary. She had uh, somebody that was trying to do her dirty, somebody that was trying to do her wrong. And so she went through the proper means. Y'all just bear with me just for a minute. She went through the proper means to try to get her help. You know, that's just like the people of God and those that uh, want God to help them. You, you go through the proper means to try to get you some help. But sometimes you got people that try to stand in your way. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, uh, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in what? High places. We, we wrestle with those individuals. And that what this lady did, she was wrestling with the judge. And the Bible says that, that though the, the judge would not avenge her speedily, she didn't give up. Hallelujah. She didn't throw in the towel. She came to the, the, that judge on a regular basis and, and said, avenge me of my adversary. Help me in my condition. Help me in my situation. She was letting them know that you got the power to help me. You, you got the means to help me. Hallelujah. And there's no other help that I can go to and that, 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 that I can receive what I need. And, and what the Bible says that the judge said, I don't fear God I, and I don't fear man, but her continually coming unto me, it wearied me. Yeah. And what the word of God is 
Paul's saying in that text is this. He's saying, y'all just bear with me just for a minute. Uh, what the text is saying is that the woman was so persistent in her actions uh, that, that she was so dedicated to what she was going through and, and wanted to be justified that she was going to that judge by any means necessary. She was going to that judge with literally threats in her mouth saying, look here, if you don't help me, I'm going to get you. If you don't help me to turn this situation around, then we're going to have some problems. We're going to have some issues. And that's how she was forcefully uh, looking and to get that judge to turn her situation around. Brothers and sisters and sisters and brothers, oftentimes we find ourselves in, in situations where we need the help from the Lord. We, we need God to turn our situations around. And, and oftentimes we may find ourselves in a predicament of soul wherein we know that God is with us. We know that God is blessing us, but we come up against some roadblocks. And sometimes when we come up against some roadblocks, we think that it's the end of the road. We, we sometimes give up. We, we face an adversaries. We're facing trouble. We're facing tests and trials. And, and sometimes we have it in our mind that this road, is, uh, we think it may be easy, but we got to realize that God has not brought us this far to leave us. God has not brought us this far to, to turn us around. And, and though the enemy wants to come up against us like a flood, and though the enemy wants to turn us around, though we may face roadblocks, uh, we got to have it in our mind that I'm going to come through this. Uh, I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Uh, I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm not going to throw in the towel. Though the enemy try to slay me, yet will I trust him. Yet will I believe in God. Yet will I persist in God. The Bible tells us, don't be weary in well doing. Uh, but, but, but you shall weep if you faint not. Uh, that's what Jesus was teaching. He was teaching, don't, don't faint in your prayers. Don't, don't become weary in your prayers. And in other words, don't lose heart when you're praying and seeking after God. When the enemy is trying to turn you around, uh, you've got to get bolder in your prayer. When, when it seems like you're hitting brick walls, when it seems like you can't go any further, that's the time for you to dig deeper. That's the time for you to cry out and spare not. That's the time to put all your trust in the Lord. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. Where shut down, dwell in the land. Now, I'm reminded of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Hallelujah. They were facing that fiery furnace. And they wanted God to turn the situation around. My God, you can be facing your fiery furnace and want God to turn your situation around. But you've got to come to the conclusion uh, that I, my God will deliver me. My God will bring me out. Uh, my God shall open the door. Uh, this door is here. Hallelujah. So God can open it. I'm going through what I'm going through so God can make a way. You really give your God a praise. How do you know that your God will make a highway out in your desert place? Uh, you'll open up doors that seem to be shut. How do you know that if you speak to a mountain, your God can move the mountain? How do you trust in God? I uh, know that God is able. Uh, somebody said God is able. God is able to do exceedingly. God is able to do abundantly. God is able to open up. God is able to make a way. My God, we've got to come to that conclusion. Now, my God, because sometimes when we're fighting against evil forces, uh, when we're fighting against the devil, and sometimes we fight against our own mind, uh, we can't lose hope in God. We can't lose our trust in God. And that's what that word means, faith. Uh, my God, you can't faint in the day of adversity. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Now, every day is a day of adversity for a child of God because the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence but the violence got to take it by force. You can't be walking around here thank you Lord 
thinking everything is all right when everything is all wrong. You've got to take a stand. I don't even know you got to take a stand. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Oh, my God, I was talking to a brother on yesterday. Thank you, Lord. He said sometimes the enemy will sneak up in here. Hallelujah. Sometimes the enemy will clothe himself and cloak himself and come in in sheep clothing. But sometimes you can identify the devil on the spot. And when you identify the devil on the spot, that's no time to just sit down. That's the time to stand up and go and face that devil. In the name of the Lord, he may come at you with knives. He may come with you with spades. But you come in the name of the Lord.
depression. You've got to not faint just because you're being pushed around. Just because you're being talked about. The greater the adversity, the greater the deliverance, the greater the struggle, the greater the power, the greater the understanding, the greater the wisdom, the greater your God is, the more you praise Him, the more you thank Him, the more you live a flow because you say to yourself, if it had not been, against you. God wants that enemy 
Hallelujah. First of all, to see the hand of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Then he's given that enemy an opportunity to repent. Give that opportunity for that enemy to change his heart. See, it's not God's will that anybody should perish. God is not about vengeful God. God, God want to see everybody saved, even your enemies. So God, so God, so God waits on the situation. Hallelujah. Until it becomes, looks like it's hopeless for you. Uh, it looks like the enemy is getting an advantage. Huh? And, and then God gives the opportunity for the enemy to turn it around. Amen. And the Bible says, the Bible says that the, the, the day of the Lord is as a thousand years. And as a thousand years is as one day with the Lord. Uh, so when the Lord deliver you, huh, and, and he's literally delivering you in chronos, not chronos time, but agape time, his time, God's time. Uh, there's a difference between God's time and your time. Hallelujah. And God said that he will deliver you and he will deliver you speedily. Now, if you don't get nothing out of what I just said, get the fact that he will deliver. He will bring you out. If you be persistent, if you be steadfast, if you be unmovable, God will bring you out. Come on and give God a praise. Don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't give up the ship. <laughs> Hallelujah. Avenge me, Lord. God is the one that's going to do you justice. God is the one that's going to help you. God is the one that see you going through. Tell your neighbor, I've come too far. I've come too far by faith. Can't give up now. Too far out there in the deep. Can't give up now. I didn't see too much. I didn't heard too much. Can't give up now. Hallelujah. I, I got to see what the end going to be. How many are waiting to see what the end going to be? Hey, I got to see what the end going to be. Because I read in the scripture, if I wait to the end, I shall receive a crown. How many want to receive a crown? That's why Paul said, I fought a good fight. Huh? How many are fighting a good fight? How many are keeping the faith? Hey, come on, give God a praise. That's my most shot. Hallelujah. If the devil tried to walk on your back, you walk on his back. Amen? Amen? He should be under your feet. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be persistent. If things starts with prayer, God is telling us we got to increase our prayer life. Amen? Some things don't move until you pray. Jesus was asked the question, Lord, how come your disciples couldn't cast out them demons? And Jesus didn't stop. He said, these things come out nothing but by prayer and fasting. Uh, this, it calls for relationship. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a time now. We got to have a relationship with Jesus. We can't just have no fly by night uh, 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 fling with him. Uh, 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 hit it and done. Amen. We got to have a relationship. Somebody say relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. Relationship. Thank you. When I married up my mind, I was going to marry my wife. Hallelujah. I asked her to marry me. And when I asked the pastor, Duck, I wanted a relationship. Amen. I went to her house, cleaned out all of her stuff that I didn't like in her house. Because we have a relationship now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see you. Brothers, y'all don't do that. Y'all may, may get in trouble. That was back in the day. <laughs> Cause, cause I, uh, who's having a relationship? I cut off all the extras. Uh, thank you, Lord. I don't know if she had any. I don't think she did. Uh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, honey. All right, she said no. Thank you. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? When, when you when you get in a relationship, stuff changes. Amen. The, the relationship changes. Amen. The level of commitment changes. Amen. Hallelujah. When I said, when we 
said I do and she will, I will, and we all do, that changed. Amen. We was in it together to win it. When you come on the Lord's side, you're not by yourself. Uh, you in it together with the Lord to win it. Uh, you got to be faithful to him and he'll be faithful to you. Come on, give God a praise. Jesus' name, amen and amen. 